Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Mike Bavoso, W6YDE, and is a question that is commonly encountered uh, by new hams and old hams alike. It says, enjoy your videos. On any antenna other than the ground mounted vertical, like a dipole or Yagi, where one side of the dipole or one side of the Yagi is grounded, at the mast, the grounded lightning protection and more is only one side of the antenna radiating. A very interesting question. <clears throat> Before jumping in to answer the question, I'd like to pay a special thanks to uh, Rich Bishop. Uh, Rich has become my newest patron on patreon.com. If you would like to become a patron and thus a supporter financially of this channel, you too can go to patreon.com slash ke0og and see if something there suits you. Now, back to the question. If we look at this in a diagram form, what we see here is that indeed, if this is the coax shield right here, that shield is grounded either directly or via the uh, lightning surge protector here, okay? And then this goes on into the house. So this half of the dipole is at DC ground, okay? And this half of the dipole goes through here and there's a little spark gap inside. And if there's a high voltage on it, and this part is grounded, a high voltage on here, a spark forms across here and shorts this one to ground too. So how does this thing radiate if that thing is shorted to ground? The answer has to do with the difference between DC and RF. The antenna is a frequency sensitive device and it behaves differently at different frequencies. At DC, direct current, or very, very low frequencies, this piece is indeed grounded. If this has any static that builds up on it due to wind going over it, it's shunted directly to ground. This side over here, that static voltage has to exceed the spark over voltage in the lightning arrestor, uh, and then it will go to ground. But this behaves entirely differently at RF. Okay, at RF, you have an RF current that is maximum in the middle and an RF voltage that is kind of a minimum in the middle. And these are RF voltages, not DC voltages. This is not a section of a waveform. This is what would happen if you put an RF voltmeter at different places across the antenna. This is what you would sense. So from an RF point of view, this is definitely not at ground, nor is this. Thus, both halves uh, radiate. Now, immediately, some people would say, well, this makes the case that you should put a one-to-one Balan, balanced, balanced to unbalanced here with the unbalanced side being here and the balanced side being here. And a lot of people, a lot of people really think that's best practice. I have not had good luck with that, but uh, I'm just one person. But you can put a choke balan, which is simply to wind several windings of the coax right there, which will keep currents off the outside of the coax. But note that what this means, there's a difference between what happens at DC and what happens at RF. They're two entirely different things. The easiest way to think about that is that the antenna itself is at, um, the antenna itself is a frequency sensitive device. And DC is a frequency that is zero hertz. And so it reacts to zero hertz as though it's a ground by shorting that side to ground. At RF, no way. You're looking at, you know, say seven megahertz. All right, this RF makes the entire antenna radiate. Now, it works the same way 
uh, when you go to Yagi's. In fact, a common form of a Yagi Okay, this is the driven element right here. But each of these is connected to ground right at the center. Okay, now there are multiple ways to feed this. This is called the driven element, D-R-I-V-E-N. This is the reflector, and this is a director these are all directors here. These are about 5% shorter than the driven element, and the reflector is about 5% longer. Okay, So you're driving this one element. You can actually attach that element to the grounded boom. This part here is called a boom. And then there's a part that goes to ground called the mast or the tower. And... Uh, what you do is you can feed this with a gamma match. If this is zero impedance at the center, it's going to be infinite at the ends. So you can find a spot along here where it is 50 ohms. And you can come out here and feed this with what's called a gamma match. A gamma match, or more commonly just a gamma match. That's a Greek letter, gamma. Um, now, the way you do this, the actual match looks like this. There's a capacitor, and then a direct match here, and this length can be varied to provide some additional impedance. And then it's fed with the coax shield there, and the coax center conductor there. And this gives you an, uh, a Ballon effect. Uh, this is balanced over here, but unbalanced over here. The capacitor is not very much, and it's usually one tube inside of another. You vary the length on that, okay? So this is a gamma match. And this will give you, note that all, the entire antenna, is at ground potential at DC. But at RF, that is not true. They are constrained to be at zero potential in the middle because they're shorted to ground. But otherwise, these ends are radiating. This is the primary radiating one. This is called the, the driven element. And these are called parasitic elements, meaning they pick up radiation from this and then re-radiate it. And if you do the spacing right, you get most of your energy traveling in that direction. Okay, so I think that should answer the question. <clears throat> so the answer to the question is that an antenna is a frequency sensitive device. And DC is a frequency at zero hertz. Okay, if you change frequencies like 40 megahertz, the antenna behaves entirely differently. Even though it may be grounded physically, that does not mean it's grounded at that frequency. In fact, it's not it's actually radiating at that frequency, okay? So there you have it. If any of you have watched this far, you might like to help out this channel financially. You can do that by going to decastler.com slash support and pick something there that works for you. There's Patreon and a couple methods using PayPal. And until we next meet, 73.